All right, I am back. We got ourselves some structures brewing at a Bellingham, Washington. Good old, which way is up? <laughs> Good old structures brewing. This one is called, um, I think it was, there it is, Form and Void. Form and Void uh, is a double IPA brewed with our favorite house blend of malts and hopped with the intention to create a flavor reminiscent of a basket of juicy oranges and mangoes. We hope you enjoy. So there's that little message to the drinker. We got this happy little fish as the label. And then it looks like we're coming in at eight point dose percent ABV. Let's crack it. Let's go ahead and uh, pour it right here into this holy mountain glass. A fair amount of head came out on that one. All right, well, we will drink it. Drink it where it lies. Uh, so there's a look at it. The lighting kind of comes directly down, so it might look a little bit darker than it is. But on my side, it is a very bright, glowing yellow. Um, very good looking yellowish orange. I don't know what happened there. We got about three fingers of a bright white head. Oh yeah. So this is just team, teeming with good fruit flavor. It's bold fruit flavor. I do think they hit the nail on the head when they were saying they were trying to create a, uh, a basket of juicy oranges and mangoes. It's definitely uh, fruity, juicy, citrus. Very nice. It also comes with about a, a nice medium bitterness. I feel like when I had it on tap, it had more bitterness than it is coming across in cans, but this is also my third beer tonight, so maybe maybe that has something to do with it as well. Very tasty, though. It is hot as hell in this bathroom. So let's get this shave on the road. Today, we're using AA Shavings Rialto, and this is... A special edition soap that was only offered through the uh, Pacific Northwest Wet Shavers Meetup in Washington State. Uh, this was actually held in Bellingham, Bellingham, Washington, where I happened to pick up some of these beers. Um, so yeah, I got this in person from Austin of AA Shaving at the Pacific Northwest Wet Shavers Meetup. Uh, if you do not know, that is a Facebook group um, for the Pacific Northwest guys and girls. Uh, so if you want to join, you know, look it up on Facebook, Pacific or PNW Wet Shavers, um, and it, it'll come up. It'll be one of the top options. Let's go ahead and uh, crack this open. Really easy twist top. No, uh, no extra effort needed there. It comes right open. Um, that's a look at the soap. We kind of got like this uh, kind of chunky, rough surface. Obviously, this is where I scoop some off the top, but if you look on the edges, it's uh, it's kind of a chunky, chunky, rough surface. It's um, a firm soap, but not so firm that you can't push into it easily. It smells great. The scent is just banging off of here. Just like that, it twists back on. Super easy. Let me wings. Do you mind? Thank you, baby girl. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So let's go ahead and use this Rialto from AA Shaving. This one is a beautiful aquatic scent, uh, kind of a woody aquatic. I got it already lathered up right here in my Thirsty Badger shave bowl. Beautiful shave bowl right there. And of course, we have to introduce this beauty. This is my first Trotter Handcrafts shaving brush, who was also in attendance 
at the uh, Pacific Northwest Wet Shavers meetup. He is a resident of Bellingham, Washington, so he didn't have to travel far. But um, I was super happy to meet both of these gentlemen and just look at this brush. He had five of these uh, these dark blue brushes um, available, and it's kind of like a black base layer with um, dark blue and almost like a like a light grayish smoke and then he uses this um, brighter lighter blue um, not sprinkles what the hell do you call them glitter um, and he just smashes it with that lighter brighter blue and of course you could imagine it's coming across on camera nicely it looks it looks good it looks great in person this thing is a fucking stunner that glitter just comes off in the in the light beautiful on top we got ourselves a um gelled badger knot and it's gelled very nicely i did um i did lather it up once with um let me grab it with the uh, zingari man all-purpose brush cleaner so I do that with all my new brushes. I give it a quick run through on the uh, Zingari Man brush cleaner. So it's splayed very nicely. Um, the brush just looks amazing. And uh, but I haven't put the brush to skin yet, so we will we will fill it for the first time right here, right now. Um, beautiful lather. It whipped up super easily, along with the uh, the little bit of water. That I was bowl blooming with I added probably I think it was about four additions of water and when I do and when I do it most of the time I'll go all the way I'll just submerge the whole bulb I'll let a little bit run back off into the sink and then whatever remains stuck to the lather I will incorporate into the bowl so it's four pretty healthy additions of water and it it uh, incorporated in very nicely this lather is nice and nice and dense and luxurious it uh, at no point looked light fluffy or aired out or watered down it, it took it very well and this uh, this vaginal feels great on the skin although it's gelled it doesn't come across as slimy which um, <laughs> I was kind of, I want to say I was, well, I was worried about it, let's be honest. After I, after I gave it a run through the Zingari Man all-purpose cleaner, I uh, went ahead and let it dry for 24 hours. And then when I came back to it, I felt, I felt the tips. And this is common for uh, gelled badger brushes, at least. Uh, gelled natural hair that um, they're very very soft when they are wet but uh, when they when they're dry they're kind of crispy and uh, I don't want to say brittle but they're 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 crispy and so it's kind of like a stark difference compared to when they're wet and hydrated but I have one other brush that was like super crispy like this one was when it was dry and uh, that one was definitely slimy. And so I was like, oh, fuck, man. This one's going to, once I put it to the skin, it's going to kind of have that same characteristic, I bet. Well, I'm happy to report I was wrong. It uh, it does not feel slimy. Um, at least it's nowhere near the way that, that other one that I was uh, referring to felt. This one... Um, feels great it's like the perfect amount of gelling it's actually quite reminiscent to my favorite badger knot that i have in my collection the uh the lancaster razor works v1 it's quite reminiscent to that um more use getting uh, more familiar with it maybe i will uh compare the two head to head and kind of see where where things lie but um it's very enjoyable it's very promising for the razor today, we're going to be using the Blackland Razors Vector, and I always got to show the profile of this thing just to really uh, bring home what a sleek and elegant um, 
profile that is. That is some great engineering right there. I absolutely love this Artist Club single edge razor. And just look at that glaze on my forehead. I have got to get my ass out into the shed and dust off my uh, portable air conditioner. Because this back bathroom is uh, about the furthest I could possibly be from my living room air conditioner, which is the main source of cooling for the house. And so I am about, I'm in the furthest room from that air conditioner. And so it, it does not get touched. And it was in the 90s today here in, in Yakima. It's finally setting in. that we are heading to my least favorite part of the year. The summertime, I absolutely hate the summertime. <laughs> Fuck the summertime, I don't like the sun and I don't like the heat. And so, my, uh, my part of Washington gets a lot of sun and it gets a lot of heat and it lingers and it stays around so i am not looking forward <laughs> to the upcoming weeks and months uh, i'm a big baby when it comes to heat <laughs> so i'm not looking forward to that there will be a lot a lot a lot of menthol usage in the uh, coming weeks and months just trying to do whatever i can to avoid the heat. I was actually really, really highly tempted to use some menthol in today's shave. I figure this is my first, my first go with Rialto on camera. And so I wanted to make sure that I gave it a fair shake. Made sure that um, I wasn't handicapping it by, by uh, absolutely drowning it in in real menthol which is known to be a a bit of a lather killer some of the more dense and uh, sturdy soap bases some of the really top-notch soap bases don't even get affected in the slightest by real menthol but um, you know some of the more some of the more uh, middle middle of the pack soap bases will degrade a little bit when you add uh, uh, as the amount of menthol that I add, which is a lot. <laughs> so, but Rialto made a great, great lather here today. It looks like I got some on the edge of my bowl or on the edge of my glass, so I'm gonna rotate that. All right, this is a tallow soap. And um, let's talk a little bit about the scent notes on this one. I mentioned it was a, uh, a woodsy aquatic so he has the scent notes listed on his uh, Instagram post as sea salt salt water cedar wood hoe wood maritime and ozone and then I think when he's trying to uh, paint the picture for us to try to get us to uh, be able to sort of visualize um, the scent he, uh, he mentions like a, uh, a breeze coming across the, uh, the water. He mentions um, the sting of bull kelp. And um, I think that bull kelp kind of has that, um, that somewhat, now I could be wrong, but this is where my mind takes me, um, kind of a, a briny, not necessarily tart. It's it's hard to describe. I've only smelt it in a few other fragrances or soaps. But it's not exactly tart, but it's like 
It's like a, a very zingy, uh, punchy citrus. And then mix that with the, um, the notes of salt water combined. So like an aquatic that has a tangy, um, zingy, very punchy citrus. Um, combined so it's not like it's not so much sweet as it is like tangy Tangy is kind of the the right word I think and then you know with a base and heart of various woods It's a it's an instant crowd pleaser. I think um, Especially being an aquatic aquatics are kind of hard to dislike they might not blow your mind away, yeah, um, you know what I mean, because they're they're so plentiful. There's so many aquatics to choose from, but when it's done right, it's it's uh, very very enjoyable. And I do think Austin did a absolutely fantastic job on this one. It has um, it has instantly rivaled the hunt for me um, out of his releases. The hunt was his uh, his first release, his freshman release, if you will. And I thought that one was also a crowd pleaser. I thought it it was very approachable. And it smelled great and much in the same fashion I think this one is also very approachable I think it'll be a crowd pleaser and I honestly believe it smells great so now that I've talked quite a bit about the uh, the soap here I do want to Shout out the guys that made it to the Pacific Northwest Wet Shavers Meetup. Bunch of cool dudes. Very friendly. Um, good people. I, I really enjoyed myself. I hate driving. I absolutely hate driving. But I do not regret going because I had a good time. We were able to... Uh, share shaving gear software and hardware i brought a bag of things um will william brought a bag of things mark brought a bag of things austin brought his uh special edition soaps and paul from trotter brought a number of brushes that we were able to uh check out in person and I think uh, me and Mark both bought one right there on the spot. You know, I'm a weak, I'm a weak man. <laughs> I'm a weak man with a hell of a, an addiction for traditional wet shaving. I also love supporting artisans um, from my area. That's why I've... Uh, I've purchased every single AA shaving release so far. And at first, I heard about Trotter, and I was like, that guy's making some brushes, but I'm in no position to uh, buy another brush at the moment. Not unless it, it, not unless it meets a specific, uh, it fills a void in my collection, which I needed a blue brush, and I wanted a... Uh, a more full yellow brush and um, I didn't know that Trotter was from Bellingham at first so when I found out that he was from Bellingham Washington I was like oh fuck <laughs> I was like one of us one of us and so <laughs> I was like I need a Trotter in my collection ASAP I messaged him asked him if he could make me a custom he said no <laughs> He said, um, but if, if, you know, if you show me something you like, 
I can uh, I can try to you know make a batch of them and if you if you're lucky enough you can snag one from the batch well I told him what I was looking for and sure enough he didn't make not a single one <laughs> that were in the vein of what I described and so I just kind of let it be at that I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna beg for it but um, lo and behold he came to this uh, Pacific Northwest wet shavers meetup and I honestly don't think this was intentional but he had five five dark blue brushes and when I had them in my hand it, it was hard for me not to take one home because it filled the void that I had plus I wanted badly to get a trotter brush in my collection so I would just be a hypocrite if I <laughs> if I walked away without one because it, it it was right there in my hands you know and I had my pick of the litter I also didn't have to fight the the wet shaving community for it you know I just paid the dude right there on the spot Lancaster razor works towel if you do not know and um so it really worked out great man Trotter and Austin for that matter, but both seemed like very, very humble dudes, very kind. Um, <laughs> and they were, uh, they were very tolerant of a wet shaving degenerate like me. So, uh, and that goes for uh, Will, Will and Mark as well. But uh, Will and Mark, <laughs> they seemed a lot more, a lot more in the same uh, vein as a uh, good old DK here they uh seemed a little bit more degenerate like like me <laughs> uh, but both both gentlemen as well so I had a great time we had a good meal we had uh, a few tasty beers and we had a nice um, gear swap and uh, we got to smell scents that we didn't have in our collections, and we shared things, and we just had good wet shaving chat. It's so fucking awesome when you get to when you get to share uh, meetup experiences like that with other like-minded uh, individuals. You really get closer, and you make contacts and friends, and and um, you help each other out with uh, interests within the wet shaving world. It's really awesome. I love to see it, and uh, I look forward to doing it again in the future. Now, we're going to finish off with some Mal Grooming in collaboration with Talbot Shaving. This one's called Okuma, and this one actually happens to share that kind of briny, tangy, tart uh, citrus note. This one's also an aquatic. Uh, it doesn't have quite the woody base that Rialto has, but it does have... A similar, I mean, it's not exact, but kind of a similar um, tangy, punchy, citrus, aquatic vibe. I would say Okuma goes a little bit more overboard with it than Rialto. I think Rialto is a, a little bit more subdued um, to where it's just kind of perfectly mixed in the blend, whereas Okuma is very bright very punchy very in your face so Rialto is uh, dialed back a little bit um, compared to Okuma and it also has that woody base that rounds it out very nicely so great sense them both and that is a one of the best aftershave splashes in the game so all right I think I have rambled quite enough but hopefully the constant flow kept you interested Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you. Get on out to a local meetup or, you know, a larger scale meetup if you can. Um, I'll tell you what, man, you make some great friends and and it's really kind of an invaluable experience. So if you can, get to a meetup in your area or, or uh, make the trip to a larger meetup if you can. So cheers, guys. I appreciate you. Shout out to the uh, Pacific Northwest Wet Shavers group. Good guys. Uh, really enjoyed my time with you. Cheers, and I'll catch you on the next one.